Okay, can everyone hear me? Let's get started. Happy Friday, everyone. So today we're going to be talking to you about lightning experience. So raise your hand in here if you are currently on Salesforce Classic and you're trying to implement lightning experience. Keep your hands up. Who here is on Salesforce Classic but is scared to implement lightning experience? Keep your hands up. <laughs> and how many of us already are on lightning experience and are just wanting to hear more about it? OK? Well, if you keep your hands up, look around the room. Everyone is here for the same reason. And what we're going to do is ease your tension and walk you through the top five things that you need to know about rolling out lightning experience to your users. So before we get started, I want to say thank you to all of our sponsors. And I'll go ahead and start introducing myself. My name is Gloria Rama. I am a senior director at Elevon. Previously spent many, many years at Aperio with Natalie. Um, have been through many Salesforce implementations with various industries, including healthcare, software, manufacturing, retail, and financial services. I have been in the Salesforce space for about seven years now. And I'll hand it over to Natalie to introduce herself and tell us why we're here today. OK. And I am Natalie. I've been at Aperio, for seven year, um, at Aperio as a principal consultant and in the Salesforce space for about seven years as well. And during that time, I've implemented, uh, I've helped implement projects ranging from really small to really large enterprise scale uh, projects. And a couple of them were actually to analyze um, Lightning Experience and see if, they, if it was appropriate for the users. So really thrilled to be here and uh, let's get started. So let's talk about a little bit why we are here. So we're talking about Lightning Experience and there's a lot of Lightning buzzwords that comes out of Salesforce right now. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of products as well. So Lightning by itself is not really meaningful if you don't know exactly what you're talking about. For example, we have Lightning Out, we have the Lightning App Builder, Lightning Components, and everything. But we're here to only talk about Lightning Experience, which is the UI, uh, UI interface that you see when you roll out to Lightning Experience. It's the seamless um, experience that you have that when you go to your mobile application or on your desktop. It's completely device agno platform agnostic, and it makes it very consistent for your users to have a seamless user experience between all of those devices. It's built on the Lightning Framework, um, which is actually what Salesforce built it on for the Salesforce One mobile applications that you might have used in the past. And so what they did is they rolled it out for the desktop and they took it to the next level by allowing your developers to also use that same framework to add on components to it. So it's easier for your users and it's also easier for your developers. They don't have to worry about all of those platforms. Um, so that's light, Lightning Experience, but let's talk about the releases and why it's so important. Salesforce has been talking about it since uh, December 2000, or about November 2015, and they've been releasing a ton of features. So many, so many things uh, are Lightning Experience related when they release uh, there are new um, versions, or summer 15, so summer, 17, summer 17, et cetera. Um, for example, uh, one of the analysis that I did was for lightning analysis right when it came out. And there was so much work to do. Uh, there was so, ma so many features that were not supported. There was um, a lot of gaps, a lot of work to do. And quite honestly, the customer was not ready for it. But uh, looking at the release notes and everything that Salesforce provided since then, there's actually a lot of features that are released. And so what I'm really trying to say is even though you think you might not be ready for it right now, do look at those release notes because you, you will soon see that everything that's missing is going to come out. Salesforce is putting a ton of emphasis and a ton of work into this. So that's, that's why Lightning Experience is, is so important. Um, let, next, um, we're, so you might be wondering how am I going to do this? And uh, Gloria is going to get us started with uh, talking about personas. Thank you. So the first step to rolling out Lightning Experience is really identifying who your users are. And how do we start with that process? So we start by defining our personas. 
A persona is a stereotypical representation of a group of users. So how do you begin gathering information about these users? You start with things like a persona survey. Start survey surveying all of the users within your organization and then group them together. So some examples you'll see up here are sales, marketing, customer service agents. We also have operations, that's a common persona, um, finance, accounting. Don't forget that Lightning Experience can be rolled out at the user level along with at the profile level. So for the scenarios where you may want a system administrator to test Lightning Experience prior to rolling it out to the rest of the groups, you can enable Lightning Experience at the user level by using a permission set. So once we've identified our personas, we also need to take an additional step and identify our key decision makers and our SMEs. Those are our subject matter experts. Your key stakeholders will help you drive decisions across the organization and help throughout the rollout process. So next, Natalie is gonna talk us through the next step, which is identifying limitations in our gap analysis. Thanks, Gloria. So we've, what we've done is identified our personas, our business users that we want to take as, your, as the pilots, group of users who are going to try out Lightning Experience first. So next step would be to do the gap analysis. And gap analysis would be when you have taken all your business processes, all your customization for that particular user group, and then identify what's supported in Lightning Experience. And whatever is not supported, that's the gap. And so the gap analysis will give us essentially the scope of work that we need to work with to release that particular um, product, so Lightning Experience, for that particular user group. So the first thing that we should do um, is, and then there's a, before I go in there, there's a ton of features or tools that Salesforce is giving, tools and documentation that Salesforce built, and this will really ease uh, the transition. So as much as possible, look around, uh, get, uh, get informed, uh, use and leverage those tools because it will really cut down the time that it'll, it'll take for you to, um, to onboard and transition to Lightning Experience. The first one is the readiness support, which just came out actually, and you can access that from your setup menu. So basically in the one click in the, in the menu, evaluate here, what it's gonna do is generate a report automatically and it'll send you an email. The email is gonna have a nice PDF with all of your customization, not all of your customization, that's maybe too much, but a lot of your customization and then which ones are supported, which one are built correctly, um, and then which ones actually need work where you might need to just tweak them a little bit so that it's uh, compliant with Lightning Experience. So you will see a lot of red, most likely, because the more customized your organization is, the more likely it is that you're not Salesforce, uh, Lightning Experience ready. But don't be scared, because what we've discussed just before is that we're only releasing this to a specific business group. So only uh, a subset of, of processes that you've implemented actually apply. So that's the next step. Uh, identify clearly what your business processes are, so that you have that subset, what the customization you've built for those processes, and then kind of step through this. So we'll have this inventory. We need to identify how, which one of those are supported or not. And that's when you wanna look at the Lightning Experience limitation. And then you see this acronym, LEX. This is the, nick the nickname that I might use as well during this presentation, because it's a little bit shorter. Um, so that those limitations is part of the documentation. It's very, it's well explained. It's really easy to step through it and to understand what is or is not, um, what is not supported in this case. Um, and then you can compare that with what you've built in your org. And then in the next slide, I'll dive a little bit more into how you can categorize all of this customization in buckets so that it help, uh, it will help define the scope. But before I go there, the last step here is your internal roadmap. Imagine you've rolled out Lightning Experience, it's a success, your customers or your users are thrilled, and then next thing you know, you've built or you've planned for this new uh, release, a product that you, were, you had on your roadmap, and it's not supported in Lightning. So just make sure that you incorporate this as part of your plan as well. Okay. All right, so we've talked about um, doing the gap analysis, um, and now let's talk about the scope um, and, and defining how much work you wanna, you, you will be putting into this. 
So we have this inventory of customization and we'll bucket this in four different categories. The first one, if you, uh, if you for example, take your, um, your the, the page layout, everything's gonna come across and it's gonna work seamlessly. You can even inline edit, you can have the help, desk, help text now as well. For the most part, it's supported. You will have it um, as, a, as you had it in classic. And so there's nothing to do, at least from a development standpoint, you're covered. There will be another tweak to it, which is change enablement, but that's not part of the development phase. So if that's the case, then uh, you can move on to the next customization. And when I say customization, it could be Visual Force page, for example, is, um, is important. It, it's, it's, um, even though it's multiple business processes, uh, it's a sort of customization, workflow rules, uh, validation rules, et cetera, is what I mean. So if it is not supported um, or it's not compliant, then you want to do this additional work. And it could be a workaround. Um, but essentially, look at the documentation. See what Salesforce says, what they're what they hoping or what they're requesting of you to be compliant, and go ahead and plan this right into your scope because that will be a good amount of work. So for example, Visual Force page, um, lighting experience as a specific standard where you will need to get to that level. So the more Visual Force pages you have, the more work it's going to be. All right, and now let's say that it is not supported, but it's on the roadmap. So you know it's gonna come up. It's in Safe Harbor, of course. It might be in uh, summer 18. So you have a few options. You should ask yourself questions. So. For example, can your users live without that feature uh, in Lightning Experience for a while? Can you release everything else and they stay in Lightning Experience? If not, then you have two options. You can, at least that I could find, you can let them switch between Lightning Experience and Salesforce Classic because this is actually a feature that you, that you have. <coughs> if they're savvy enough, if, they're, if the users are comfortable enough with this, you could provide both user interface. and. Depending on what they're doing in the org, they switch between the two. Otherwise, you can consider also postponing the pilot. Um, <laughs> too, too much ahead. <laughs> you can uh, postpone the pilot because uh, safe forever. If, there, if, if it's available in three months, why not wait Just a little bit and you might get this big feature available. All right. And then lastly, if it's not supported and it's not in the roadmap, then I think that's the most complicated use case because maybe it will show up on the roadmap or maybe it's never gonna be supported. Um, so ask yourself questions again. Uh, is it critical uh, for your users? Can your users live without it? If not, consider again postponing. Or are you able to find a workaround and so you will have, you probably will need your developers to help you find how much work that will be to go completely custom on this. Or, um, and I think that's maybe the best one, consider do I have the right group of users? What I will mention is when Salesforce released Lightning Experience, it was mostly focused on sales. So, I mean, you might want to look at your sales group of users, uh, at, for a pilot at least. Okay, so what have we done? We've defined um, our personas, we've defined our set of customization, we've bucketed them in different places. So what we have is a scope. We have the work that we need to do to roll out our users to Lightning. So what Gloria will help us with now is determine the rollout plan for, to deliver this functionality. So the fourth step is developing a strategic rollout plan. And you'll see here on the screen, we have some key dates. So our kickoff, our development, our deployment, our go live, and then testing, or what we call assessing metrics. So it's key that with your rollout plan, you have those key dates and those key milestones. Within your rollout plan, you should also identify the groups of users that you're going to be rolling out this functionality to, whether that's a pilot group or a smaller group um, of a business unit or one specific persona. It's also important to iterate upon your rollout plan. So this is not set in stone. This is something that we initially come up with collectively as a group, and then we iterate with an agile methodology and throughout kickoff, development, deployment, those dates may slightly change. 
Putting together a rollout plan is probably the most crucial step in my opinion. That way we are all level setting on the same dates, the same milestones, and everyone knows what's coming up next. So the last and closing step is to develop a clear and change enablement plan, which will happen once we move into the testing milestone. And Natalie's gonna walk us through that next. Okay. So changing enablement plan is really key because the last thing, last thing you would want is putting so many hours, so much work into this project and being so diligent about everything and not getting the adoption that you were hoping for. Because that would be a little bit of a failure, right? If your pilot users don't adopt Lightning experience, and your hopes were to roll this out to your entire company. So who are the different, peop uh, different groups of, of employees that you want to get involved into your change enablement plan? So first of all, you would have your stakeholders, um, business admins or super users, as well as just your general user base. Your stakeholders are going to be really critical in supporting your, your plan and your project from the start. And then they will also be there to provide visibility across the company, just enhance how important this is. Your business admin or super users are going to be your best advocates. So you gotta make sure they are well trained, they um, are into lightning experience and they can transfer kind of this passion to your user base as well. And then your users obviously are going to use lightning experience and, and this, if, if this works out well for them, they'll also become your advocates um, for your next um, your next rollout, essentially. So what and how should your communication plan look like? Again, here you can use Salesforce, what Salesforce puts at your fingertips. Um, you can use trailheads for your business admin. There's a lot, a ton of information on trailheads that your business admin on super, or super users could use. You could also leverage chatter groups, a chatter post. You could have an internal chatter group where users could ask their questions or get provide feedback and that kind of things. You can also build demos um, that, that will pinpoint really specific functionality that your users can, where your users can get up to speed. And then um, also have Lightning Experience Champion. So that's gonna be a person who is going to be all about uh, um, Lightning Experience, going to create a buzz in the company, build some expectation. And then here, for example, you, have, you could have a poster like this all on your walls in your, of your company. People were wondering, interested in what Lightning ex experience is and um, really have this anticipation, even though you're releasing it to a single group of uh, users. And then how do we measure success? So that's gonna be an important factor as well. You wanna make sure that as part of this pilot, you know exactly how, how it's going, how adoption is, is tracking, so that you can learn from any mistakes and then apply this to your next rollout. So Salesforce actually released a new um, a dashboard on the App Exchange, which um, allows you to track all of these numbers. So if you install it before you roll out Lightning, you can see how your adoption is tracking. And I think the name is um, Lightning Experience Dashboard, Adoption Dashboard, something simple like that. Um, so you, want, you, can, you can do that and then obviously uh, create surveys, get your users involved in providing feedback um, so, that, so that you can improve for the next rollout. So those are the five, five key things to know. I'll recap really quickly. We have the personas, uh, identifying the personas, uh, doing the gap analysis, uh, building your scope, categorizing those uh, customization. Um, uh, sorry, what was it? <laughs> Rollout plan. <laughs> Creating the rollout plan. <laughs> and then lastly, uh, the change in enrollment plan. <laughs> so, this, um, so this is the overview of what we did. And then, Gloria, could you walk us through maybe the, what will help um, to yeah, get more help? Sure. So the great thing about the Salesforce community is that you can Google a question and get an answer immediately. Um, so leverage your success communities for getting help. Um, blogs, webinars, podcasts, follow some of your MVPs that are here at the conference. Um, we also have Salesforce partners that will specialize in rolling out Lightning Experience. So lean on them for questions um, and seeking advice as well. And then last but not least, trailheads. 
So that's a really great way to get help, um, simulate some actual scenarios that you would go through by implementing lightning experience, and then also troubleshooting. You can take a trailhead as many times as you want. Um, so these are some really great places to find help. All right, that concludes our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.